Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to another episode of the Hoops All In podcast. I'm your host, Worlands Francois. We got Kane Legacy. We got Kyle Anthony joining us once again. How you guys doing? Hey, it's good to be back. Doing yeah, good, man. man. Thanks for having me back. Hey, man, man. I, feel, I feel like I haven't <laughs> seen you guys in a minute. Oh, God. It's been a minute. Oh. Yeah. Yeah. It's been a while. I don't like that. We need to, we need to touch base more. We're brothers, the, you know what I'm saying? Well, you know, in, in the in the world of broadcasting, that's uh, that could only be like a few minutes. So true. Yeah, true. To the fans, it's only true. been since the last episode, right? <laughs> <laughs> we got the red cups going again. Everybody's good to go. Hey, yeah. no red cups for me, man. I'm I'm drinking water. Summer's uh, coming. I gotta get in shape. I gotta is- look good. You already know how I'm coming, man. Hey, this is light water. <laughs> the calorie Patron. <laughs> we got Patron in that. <laughs> uh. <laughs> All right, but let's get this episode started off here. So um, lately, the past couple of years in the NBA, especially with what happened with uh, the shortened season, there's the COVID and picking back up in the bubble. There's been an issue of disrupting fans, you know, fans going to, into the stadiums, cursing at players. Even we had a situation where fans spitting on players and things of that nature. So I wanted to ask you guys, does paying for your seats give fans the right to flat out get disrespectful and insult players, um, you know, whether that's being on the bench or in the stands or when they're playing performing on the court or on the field? What do you guys think about that? I, I, I personally, I feel like everyone has this sense of entitlement because they paid – Either they either they paid for you know top dollar or premium you know for premium seats court side or not or whatever, or because they were given seats by someone or whether it's a corporate sponsor or something whatever and and they feel privileged for that Matt uh, in that regard, uh, they think that what comes with that is their um, their right to speak their minds in a rude or aggressive way and and. No, the short answer is for me is no, it does not give you the right to be disrespectful. It's, you know, it, talking trash if you're an opposing player is one thing. Talking a little trash to a player in a, you know, keep it civil because you're not on the court. You know, I mean, uh, you're not competing. And these are people who uh, forget that you may be coming to see a, a, an athlete that you normally see uh, on television, but uh, you're forgetting that they are human and they have earned the, the right to not be abused uh, verbally. So, you know. Yeah, it's for me, uh, like you guys know, you know, I've spent years like DJing and, you know, producing and being in front of people and drunk people at that, you mm-hmm. know, and, you know, that's another component too with the games, you know, alcohol. But as far as whether people have the right, I mean, mm-hmm. y- y- you know, I'll come out and say probably an opinion that nobody's going to agree with, but the truth of the matter is they do have the right to say whatever they want to say verbally. You know what I mean? When it comes to throwing bottles and things like that at players nobody has the right because that constitutes assault that's illegal Mm. you know but uh verbally now they have the right you know and it's up to the players and people like me i've learned a lot about anger management how to disengage with unruly fans and people that come up yelling at me you know in a disrespectful way to request the right song i can't go around punching fans in the face because I, you know what I mean? I'll lose a lot of club gigs like that. So I have no, to no really matter how much you want myself. to. But... Yeah. I, I'm not going to, I'll tell you guys right now, you know, my fans as well. I will, I, I want to, you know what I mean? Punch somebody in the face for disrespecting, but you know what I mean? Part of being a professional, whether it's an athlete, a DJ or, you know, media personalities, like you said, you know, like we, we have to, for our own good and our own mental you know, sake, we have to learn to disengage with disrespectful people. You know, we're not in the hood anymore. We can't just go around punching people in the face and doing these things. So they have the right, and we have to learn to disengage with that. Now, that all that being said, it doesn't make it morally right. 
You know what I mean? But that goes to a societal thing. That's more than just basketball. You know, there's something about people now, and it's become, I've noticed, more and more prevalent in our society where I guess it's like the squeaky wheel gets the oil kind of mentality where people think the more rude they are, the more abrasive they are, the more they get their way. You know, it's mm. become an admirable trait. I mean, you know, mm. we've watched it happen even in the political sphere, you know, mm. where dialogue has gone in the trash and they're like, I don't care. He tells it like it is, you know what I mean? No matter how rude or disrespectful the person is, people admire that. now. So that's a societal problem. I don't know whether people are just being raised the wrong way or (laughs) something in the water. I don't know what it is. It doesn't make it right. Just because you 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 mentioned legal right. You mentioned an interesting, you brought up an interesting point, (coughs) you know, sometimes liquor is involved and that brings out a side that, uh, Usually people suppress, you know, liquor makes it easier to, to, uh, have loose lips. Yeah. Yeah. And that's, you know what I mean? Like they're going to, they're never going to stop selling alcohol oh, sure. or games. That's you know what I mean? Count. It's too much of a money. Maker. Yeah. That's so, right. yeah. But I mean, you know, do they have the right? I mean, I don't know. Like I've, you guys can probably speak to this better than me. You know what I mean? But there are laws, you know, and there's no law against speech, regardless of how hateful and disrespectful. But there are NBA rules. I don't know what the I may not be as familiar with the NBA rules. You know what I mean? Like, is there a line that they have in place that, you know, fans can't cross? You know, if that's the case, then they don't have the right because they get kicked out of the stadium. So I like I know where I want you. I want you want to say something. I just want to say something really quick before I preface everything else, the, the little research that I did. Um, you know, the, the, um, there's for the playoffs for last year's playoffs, there were five venues that banned fans from the arena due to disruptive, you know, unruly behavior. That was last year. Around, you know, um, and I've been attending games at Madison Square Garden for a long time and they they make an announcement every you know pre uh, before every games begin saying you know any disruptive lang- foul language disruptive behavior will get you ejected that I'm yeah. paraphrasing you know and so this was long before it started making news on a regular basis you know and um I don't know. Some some people get it and some people don't. And, you know, I've never had a courtside seat, but. Uh, you know, considering that they will come at you, even if someone around you complains and, and you're sitting further back, you know, yeah. that's a testament to the venue operator in, in that particular case. But Wells, what's your take on things? Oh, uh... It exists. It's very, very tough. And I'm mainly going to have to side with Kane on that because of players like fans are part of the player salary in terms of the fans who go out there, spend their hard earned money working 40 hours a week, sometimes 60, sometimes 80 to save that money to go buy $70, $80, $100, sometimes court side seats cost five thousand dollars ten thousand dollars paid ridiculous prices for that that money is going into those players pockets now there is a line that needs to be crossed as you as you said Kyle just because you bought you know a courtside seat that doesn't give you the right to be disrespectful to talk about somebody's family somebody's kids that doesn't give you the right to spit on them and stuff of that nature so there has to be a, a, a boundary a balance of line that needs to be crossed and I just feel like in today's NBA I'm going to go with the Russell Westbrook situation it has gotten so soft. And if you guys most likely know Westbrook came out after the game and said, well, I will not tolerate being, you know, nicknamed West brick because he has not lived up to his potential playing on the Los Angeles Lakers, having career lows in every statistical category. And I'm like, hold on, but you're the same guy who goes out there talking trash to other players talking trash to possible other fans of opponents teams when you kicking their butt but when the same energy is reciprocated to you because you're not playing well you're playing like crap you can't handle that energy like same thing you know and, and, and i just come to terms like are we really going to take away 
that fan interaction, like there's been plenty of clips of Kevin Durant going back on the course I with fans, Kyrie, LeBron, James, so-and-so. And most of the stuff, you know, I don't want it to get physical, but as I just mentioned, there should be a line that needs to be crossed. And well, also another situation I can harp on is the infamous Malice at the Palace, where Ron Artest and Steven Jackson them got involved to the stands and they assaulted a fan. Now, if they weren't protected by some, you know, laws. I don't really know the whole full um, lawful details about that, but I know that they just got suspended. And I believe that the person who was pressing charges all of a sudden dropped the charges, but say if they continue to do that, they were probably looking at severe legal time in prison for assaulting a fan. So if fans are allowed to come in and, and say some certain words and the trash talk is all part of the game, you got to keep the fan interaction because those fans or will continue to buy your product and will continue to put money in the players' pockets. But there has to be a line that should not be crossed. And, and you know, I just feel that we, we just continue to live in an age where more people get disrespectful. And I'm happy that you mentioned that, Kyle, that those fans who were said some things to some players are not allowed back in the stadium because there is a, a certain level of professionalism and conduct that you have to act it's just it's just human society like when you're out in public you're not gonna act like an animal you know what i'm saying so uh yes and no if that's my answer yes they are allowed to say to be disruptive and in, in, in the context of trash talking to players saying hey you suck you effing suck blah 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 all that but to talk about somebody's family kids whatever uh uh you know uh you know when it gets too personal that. uh, that's definitely um, crossing the line way beyond, but I, I, um, according to this, uh, sports and media, sports media and info network, um, called Wagrin Enterprises, uh, we've had the, first of all, I wanted to say that, you know, you, just like you've cited, you know, West, Russell Westbrook, there's been other incidents involving players like LeBron James, Carmelo Anthony, Kyrie Irving, Jordan Clarkson, John Morant. And that's just this past current season. Um, but according to this company, this uh, source, we're looking at the most worst behaved fans, according to surveys, the worst behaved fans in NBA arenas come. Number one is Los Angeles Lakers. Number two are the that's New York right. Knicks fans. Number three, which you know, number three is Boston. Uh, I don't, I, four, I'm surprised they're not number one, honestly. Number four is Philly. I thought Boston and Philly would have actually been higher technically. But, mm-hmm. you know, and yeah. number five is Detroit. Um, and that's not taking into account the malice and the palace thing that happened years ago. Now, just to be fair. Wow. Just mm-hmm. to be fair, there are some cases where we've had um, they survey the same survey, same source. Talks about the most, um, let's say, disagreeable NBA players. And worlds, you're probably not going to like this. Number one is LeBron James. Of course. (laughs) Number two is Russell Westbrook. Number three is James Harden. Four is Kevin Durant. And five is Joel Embiid. Wow. Wow. (laughs) <laughs> three of them. Three of these guys got their start in Oklahoma City. It might be yeah. <laughs> in the water over there in the Midwest. But, you know, the almost 40 percent of the people surveyed said that behavior has gotten worse since fans have returned to the arenas, you know, after the COVID shutdown. So that's emblematic of society in general. I've yeah. noticed a lot of bad behavior, worse behavior since the pandemic it's like we forgot how to be civil to each other yeah yeah Yeah. and you want to know what what you mentioned too um was those five players are all polarizing figures like you mean lebron has gotten criticized from fans since he was 16 years old on the cover of sports illustrated so i'm not surprised that he was number one kevin durant we all know about his burner accounts going back (laughs) and forth with fans on twitter i'm not surprised he's in the top five joel Embiid. Mr. Trash Talk himself. He's like the Kevin Garnett of this age and generation. He <laughs> will go back and forth with anybody. So I'm not surprised about that list. It's just because, again, those are the top five polarizing figures in the league. So they're not be afraid to borrow with it anybody. But, wow, that's interesting. And You know what? I, I thought Utah would be on that top of that list, too, because there has been some things I've been seeing and reading 
that Utah, you know, especially with Westbrook and other players who come in, who visit and come play against the Jazz, that they've been saying that their fans say a lot of racial mm -hmm. and sensitive things. I'm surprised that Utah was not, you know, top five on the list. Philly is Philly's no, that's well, a guarantee. Sure. New York guaranteed as well, too. But <laughs> surprised about Utah. Yeah, yeah. I well, I'm sure I don't have the you know the the rankings beyond number five, but uh I'm I'm sure they made the list for sure. They might be number six. Yeah, <laughs> probably. Yeah. Well, so, I mean, awesome. you you you're saying racial things to a court full of guys that are like over six foot six, six foot seven. You got to say them kind of quietly. <laughs> it's not quite as disruptive. Yeah, <laughs> but but again, it, it, you mentioned it just goes back to the whole you know social media Twitter fingers that we have. Like we will go out and say you know a whole bunch of things that we would never say to their face. Media personnel themselves, like Skip Bayless, Shannon Sharp, Stephen A. Smith. Well, Shannon Sharp actually played, but guys who never really played a professional sport in their life, they will go and say the most outlandish things about a player, whether that's warranted or not. It's their job to give strong opinions and criticism. Fair point. But it can get harsh. And it's like, if that person, that that individual was in your face, you would not be saying half the things that you said about them on air. And most of the times when they have these athletes on their show, they dial back a lot of what they said. They'd be like, hey, thank you for joining. You know, course, appreciate you taking that the means, time. That means re ratings. That means clicks. Yeah. That means attention and spotlight. But, you know, I think sometimes people forget the uh, – the difference between reporting news and making sure that you distinguish the news from your opinion, yes. you know, yeah. and a lot yeah. of sports casting is opinion based, you know, yeah. it doesn't yeah. take that long to quote stats, but it, you can get a whole lot of content out of your personal opinions. Mm -hmm. yeah. <laughs> well, I mean, it's like, I think it's society in general, like we've gotten ruder, but yet softer at the same time. So like everybody went like by Ruder, everybody feels the right to say what they want to say, especially on the internet. Like because almost every run in or any negative thing I've heard, you know, as a DJ has been online. Keyboard now, I don't engage again. Yeah, yeah. Keyboard warriors. Uh, I don't gauge again because what happens is right. I've put money and hard work and time into building up my social media following. So the minute I engage with somebody. I'm basically elevating them now, yes. giving them the same press that I paid for or worked for. Mm -hmm. I'm giving them that same elevation for free, which yes. is what they exactly. want. Yeah. That's the, the cause of all this. They're yeah. trying to get attention, you know? Exactly. It's a lot of craving of neediness there at times. Yeah. And now what the reason I say we've gotten softer at the same time is because, Kyle, you and I grew up in a place in the area, you know, Brooklyn, like you say something out of pocket to the wrong person, you get... You know, punch right in your mouth. It wasn't even a big deal. You do that now. You know what I mean? Like, imagine if Skip Bayless says something out of pocket about LeBron James and punched him in the face. I mean, <laughs> you know, like, LeBron would be in the wrong. <laughs> like, yeah. that would be it. Like, he'd be, yeah. what they call it, canceled. You know, yeah. Canceled, you know. And yeah. sued and thrown in jail, you know. So it's like, you know, we've, I don't know how it happened. It's the most, it's the craziest thing. We've gotten ruder, but softer because yes. it's like everybody wants to say what they want to say, do what they want to do, but nobody yeah. has any repercussions at all. Right. You know. Now, what do you guys you think? You sound would like be you really wanted to say something like that. Uh, no, no, no. Oh yeah, I'll let Kyle go. I just want to know <laughs> what do you guys think that there could be a way to fix this because obviously they're going to keep kicking out fans for the rest of their life if there's no type of policy in place. Now. I'm not Charles Barkley, and Charles Barkley has said some outrageous things on television, but he has also said some funny things. Do you think that every NBA player is allowed to beat up one person in the stands just a year? Because, again, I, Kyle, you have been to a lot of games. I've been to a lot of college basketball games. I, the stuff that I've heard come out of fans' mouth, I'm like, listen, I would come up and deck you in the face if I, if I didn't have the, the fear of being fine charged with assault blah 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 now you're allowed to say whatever you can to me but don't be mad if i retaliate now i'm not inciting for violence i'm not saying fans could go up in the stands and beat players but what do you think could be a logical solution so not, for that not to kind of de-escalate now obviously not being people yeah, yeah, I like, tonight to I pick I, you. yeah you know i'm just i just wanted to I'm Charles that's my year 
<laughs> I just want to mention Charles Barkley because he said that on Inside the NBA. He was like, I think players should have one free beat up. <laughs> they should just go into the stands and beat them. <laughs> somebody for talking mean, crazy. Even if the NBA went for that, the legal system is going for that. You know, well, you, you know, maybe we can maybe we can actually institute the purge and just like you know, we could start purge. with the we can start with the NBA games and then expand. You know, I was gonna say because to me again, it's a hard no because like. Yeah, you know, my philosophy on violence anyway is I'm nonviolent until it's protection of myself, protection of my loved ones, protection of my property. Right. Those exactly. are the only three reasons I engage in violence. And at that point, violence is not a game. It's an ex- extreme thing. So I don't beat up people for saying whatever at the DJ. But, I, but what I will do is turn to security and be like, you better do your damn job and get them out of here. You know what I mean? And you know, a couple more times of that, and most clubs I've worked with ban people for life, you know, for unruly behavior. Because it's just a bad look. So I think the answer yeah. is that. You know what I mean? Like, the NBA's got to start cracking down and be like, look, this is too disruptive. We're going to take your ID, you know, <laughs> and, you yeah, know, I'll three violations and you're out, lifetime ban. You know? Yeah. Well, I think all signs are pointing to them. They are taking measures now. They're being a lo- lot more proactive in terms yeah. of uh, in terms of banning fans and doing what's necessary to keep it safe, because uh, at the end of the day, it's it's all about your public image of your venue, and it, and that's directly connected mm-hmm. to revenue stream. Yes. Yeah. Plus, yeah. you really want to make one of these big mouth, loud mouth losers a, a rich man because you punched them in the face. Like, no, thank you. I'll keep my money. Keep talking. I'm good. You know, or, or, or have one your boys. Or have your boys do it. <laughs> I'm not advocating. Yeah, but if I'm the one with the money, that's. I'm not trust advocating. Me, when I, you, I gotta keep my boys in check too, because uh, for some reason Desmond will do something. Yeah, Des, I brought your name up. There. He'll do something, and I'll get blamed for it. Like they look at you because you're the one with the money. Like they, mm, no. If yeah. LeBron's cousin beats somebody up, LeBron is getting sued. Yeah. Yeah. Because they're going to be you related. I mean, probably just, <laughs> just just keep kicking them out, honestly. you just like, hey, listen, yeah. you're just going to kick you out. I like the three strikes you're out. You say, hey, the first yeah. warning, hey, yeah. we're going to need you to stop talking. Second time mm-hmm. we see it again, we're going to give you another warning. We're going to move your seat. Third time, all right, ID, you're yeah. done. done. Yeah. Yeah. Well, you know, and that should, be, that. that should be NBA-wide, that man. Yeah. You know? Well, you know, I just. No, you don't I... get to go over to Brooklyn. From MSG and start doing the same thing over there just because you got banned from Madison. <laughs> yeah, right. All right, I'll just take the train and go to the stop. I'll start up I'll do the same there. thing. But no, I, Looking you know, we, we're talking about <laughs> when we talk about um, a lot of these courtside seats, though, and I think we can move on. But uh, I just want to say that uh, some of those seats or a lot of those seats are, you know, part of corporate packages. You know what I mean? So if one of the penalties is the company losing their rights to the season tickets, that right there is incentive, to, you know, for a, a fan, a person in that seat to be on their best behavior. Because, yeah. you know, suddenly you you could be not only faced with repercussions from the company, um, the company facing rep- repercussions in terms of their season ticket holdings. But now you're talking about the possibility of getting very, very much embarrassed at work and maybe worse. So you know, fired. I think that would be that would be a good incentive, you know, just yeah. Take their privileges away. Their season I agree. Through, just, All right. I, Kyle, that should be a policy for rain. Uh, oh, if that's the case. You start buying tickets for employees. Oh, <laughs> like, like, <laughs> uh, yeah, well. <laughs> well <laughs> we're gonna we're gonna make sure you're fired. Uh, I'm gonna do the I'm gonna weed uh weed out those people long before I start paying for corporate tickets, that's for sure. But anyway, I digress. Yeah. 